Hello and welcome to the Power of Love series. It is here that you'll learn how to dismantle the enemy's schemes, and in result, strongholds will fall, addictions will break, and fiery darts will be eradicated in Jesus' name. You'll learn how to hear God's voice and feel His love in ways you never thought possible. To stay connected, make sure you like this video and subscribe below. And to help advance the mission of reaching more people, share this video with at least one friend today. This is the love series. How to feel God's love, how to show love to God, and how to take your relationship to a whole nother level. Part one. Why is it so hard to feel God's love? I mean, most people, when they think about feeling God's love, it's an intellectual thing. It's like, I know he loves me. But they don't even feel it. They're not even sure if he likes them because they don't feel him. Colossians 3.12 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Clothe yourselves as God's chosen people, set apart, fully loved. Clothe yourselves. So that's a command. He's saying, this is who you are. You are my loved. You are my people. You are my deepest care. Therefore, put on this clothing. He's saying the clothes is actually a clothing of protection, just like clothing is. Clothing, all clothing is a form of protection, a form of safety, a form of comfort, a form of uh, exactly what God is wanting in this moment, you to walk out his love. So he says, you are dearly loved, Therefore, protect yourself by putting on my identity, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. If you put these on, you'll feel my love more. Most people have a hard time having compassion when they don't feel loved. Kindness when they don't feel loved. Humility when they don't feel loved. Gentleness when they don't feel loved. Patience when they don't feel loved. Everyone does the opposite. Why is that? because the flesh is still activated. The armor of God is actually removing the flesh. Remember, it's an invasive belt of truth. But if the flesh isn't removed, it's hard. you can't feel the love of God because you can't have salt water and fresh water in the same place. So for most, they have a bad rule. that They have to earn God's love. You ever feel like that? You have to earn God's love? You got to do more, be more? When he just said, clothe yourself with compassion. Start acting like me. Start thinking like I think. Start um, talking like me. Start putting on my identity. But we don't do that. We want to go earn God's love. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here, Jesus is saying, I am the great one. There's no one greater coming. I am the supreme one. You need rest for your soul. You're tired and you're weary and you need my love. And I want to give you my love. I want to give you my compassion. I want to give you my kindness. I want to give you my humility. I want to give you my gentleness. I want to give you my patience. But most people have a very hard time of receiving that because they did not earn that love. Now let's process this for a second. No new mom or dad believes that their newborn has to earn their love. Nor when the five-year-old doesn't understand that they're working so hard to kill themselves, to pay the bills, and to give them everything they need, does the mom or dad 
start showing love in proportion to the child earning their love. No. They give them unconditional love. But see, that child grows up and something changed. Something changed and they start thinking they have to earn God's love. When the child grows up and they're in high school, they begin to make them earn material. Not their love, but material. They they teach them how to work hard and how you get things by working hard. Maybe the car, their clothes. They own things they have on their want list. But mom and dad steal a show. Kindness, gentleness, sweetness, and a caring heart. To feed them a good meal. To do the little things around the house that they know they're just not quite there yet on. They have unconditional love. Sure, they may have frustrations and there's lack of gratefulness and the you know stewarding of love and protecting their child goes on and it's back and forth. But there is this maybe tough love that never leaves. And then if the child gets in a car accident or something like that, the mom literally just bends over backward in unconditional love because she loves the child regardless. So it was a stronger love, but it's still love. And maybe even additional intentional effort at their current age. Everyone's different, and some people have been poor parents, but there's never this, go get a job or I do not love you. So why do we feel like God's love solely is based on earning his love? Why? Because the enemy knows that after Adam and Eve fell, they were susceptible to attacks on their weakest front, which is what they lost in the Garden of Eden. They lost their relationship with God. They lost their relationship with God. When you have fear of anything, if we got clear on where the root of the fear was, it comes down to one of two different things. Are you ready? Fear of not being enough and fear of not being loved. That is the sole fiery dart at the foundation of all the fiery darts of the enemy. This is ingrained into the fibers of every soul's belief system. And it normally gets triggered sometime when you're little and your natural harmless response is, I want to please to make mom and dad happy. The enemy then over time begins to promote this to solidification. If you do not do, then you will not be loved. This fiery dart is from the enemy. And it hits every person at different ages based on personality and how their parents showed love. The enemy then is like cancer. He is looking for a host that it can subdue and host his deficiency of where you are most vulnerable. For some, it's super young. Others, not not until you get a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And others, not until you're deep into the fully providing for an entire family where that hits that point. Look, the enemy's desire is not for this to be just an earthly battle, but a spiritual one. He desires you to feel what earning love feels like and then apply the same belief system to your relationship with God. This is killing everyone's soul in America. This is the nail in the coffin for your soul. His desire, the enemy's desire, is to build a spider web of beliefs that feed on each other, that keep you caught up in the web of contradicting realities, that live inside you like an internal slave lord controlling your deepest emotions, will, thoughts, personality, and punishing you for lack of ability, success, correct decisions, etc. To accomplish your own desires. He knows that if he can fully set the scheme inside you. That you do not have control over your subconscious feelings and thoughts. And whatever you feel is genuine. And you want to feel genuine right. Then this would give him total control of your life forever. Any emotion he placed in you. You would want to go 
feel. Then, once he sets up camp in you at a young age, you plug into the rules. You have to earn God's love. And he knows that you'll be loyal to the core beliefs and produce feelings and thoughts out of them on autopilot and never ever allow yourself to feel God's love because you'll never be able to earn it. You'll never be able to earn it. See, this is the paradox. This is the paradox of the entire time you're struggling. You're in full control to change your beliefs inside you to actually just receive God's love and then you'll be the great one in Christ. But without the truth behind the mainframe, without the truth that you actually were already given God's love, that the slave Lord is no longer in control, that the jail cell is open, without this truth, we become subject to the deepest feelings and thoughts inside us, which are from the father of lies, the man of destruction, the soul stealer himself. Today, I want to end with this. We're going to go back to those two verses, Colossians 3.12 and Matthew 11.28-30. Colossians 3.12, Therefore, as God has chosen, chosen means you were chosen to be on his team, period, end of story. It's a command, you're chosen, so you need to have a new empowering belief that if you're chosen, you can't be unchosen. He chose you wholly and dearly loved. So he set you apart. The word holy means set apart. The word dearly loved means fully encompassed, overwhelmed, immersed in his love. Then he said, clothe, protect yourself with my identity. Obviously, we know the armor of God is his identity. And he also says compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience is his entire identity. So he's telling you, put that on. Wear me. That's going to change your thoughts and your emotions. As we know, thoughts and emotions are everything. And I'm telling you right now, we've got to get over this bad rule of earning God's love. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. If you've been weary and heavy laden, if you've had a moment of just overwhelm, if you've been stretched, go lay in his lap. Let Jesus comfort Know his unconditional love is always unswerving, and if you are trying to earn it, you won't be able to actually receive it appropriately. So go just give in. You can go earn achievements by working hard. You can go kick butt, take names. You can go be a boss and literally take massive traction in the earthly realm, but you do that out of his love. You do that from His love, not to earn His love. Process that today. Set some new empowering statements up and walk out that with boldness. Boldness.